Alhamdulillah. Wassalamun ala ibadih ladhina astafa. Ya Rabbah Sayyidina Muhammad. Wa ali Sayyidina Muhammad. Salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammad. Wa sahbihi wa sallim adad ilmi. Can we ask you, O Allah, the Lord of our Master Muhammad, and the family of our Master Muhammad, to send your mercy and magnification upon Sayyidina Muhammad and upon the family of Sayyidina Muhammad as well as his companions and peace to the, to the extent of your knowledge and we ask you O oh Allah to remove the sorrow of our hearts in this world and the next and that you alleviate the hardships of his community and chains transform their states into the bets of states O oh, most merciful and our beloved brother Amir who we'd also call if maybe not I, I'm too small to say the poet of the age but I'll certainly say the poet of our age or our poet of this age Allah preserve him by God I have found no good in this wretched life save that I have found it reflected by your light this light of light sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam who came to show us all good and as Al-Busiri said of him in this meaning wa anta misbahu kulli fadlin fama tasduru illa an dhawika al-adwa'u speaking to the Prophet sallallahu in his hamziya Al-Busiri rahimahullah says you are the lamp like these lamps here you're the lamp of all virtue so no light proceeds except from your lights. So the light of La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam, the light of salah, the light of zakah, the light of hajj, the light of fasting, the light of filial piety, being kind to our parents, the light of husnul mu'ashara, the light of, of, of spouses being good to each other, the light of chastity, the light of sobriety, the light of charity, the light of good neighborliness, the light of justice, the light of struggle, the light of fortitude, the light of all virtue. He is the lamp of all of that. Sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. And the fact that we are sitting and that your needy brother is standing in a gathering where Allah's word is recited where his names are mentioned, where his beloved is celebrated, where salawat is sent upon him. And each of you said, Sallallahu Alaihi Insha'Allah, when we were reciting that poem at the beginning, and there was a, a, a majdub, like someone who was kind of out of his mind due to the remembrance of Allah, um, where our shaykh studied that he would go around saying, one for 10, one for 10. Meaning, say Sallallahu Alaihi, one from you, to receive 10 from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is a gathering of Allah's grace, of light, of radiance. And you heard our beloved Shaykh Ibrahim say, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, surely I am a warner to you all before a painful punishment. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and that is an echo of his voice. Any reminder with this uh, reciter, uh, Hafiz Amr, what he recited at the beginning of this gathering, any of the other verses that were recited, the hadiths that are mentioned, the dhikr that is made, the poetry that is made, any of that that conforms to one of the meanings of the revelation and the sunnah and the virtue that he directed to, take it as an echo of the voice of that messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who's a warner to all of us to protect us and summon us away from a painful punishment. Allah says on the tongues of the believers in Surah Al-Imran, رَبَّنَا إِنَّنَا سَمِعْنَا مُنَادِيَيْ يُنَادِي لِلْإِيمَانِ أَنْ آمِنُوا بِرَبِّكُمْ فَآمَنَّا O oh, our Lord, we have heard a caller calling all of you believe in your Lord, so we have believed in that caller that we have heard and that any true Honest believer articulates, O oh, our Lord, we've heard a caller, that caller is a Nabi Muhammad. 
That lamp of virtue was the Nabi Muhammad, and he came as this year's virtues is themed in an environment of immense virtue that all proceeded from him in his teachings and the adherence to the vestiges of the teachings of the previous prophets that are part of his invitation. An environment of virtue that proceeded from him and vice which was the absence of adhering to those teachings of Nabi Muhammad, whether they were articulated on his tongue or they were articulated by the previous prophets, which are part of his message, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. So he came in an environment of, of, of the vice of kufr, ta'ala, of disbelieving in Allah, denying literally the reality, the real al-haq, Al-Zahir, the most evident one, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he came in an environment where people were denying Allah, associating partners with Allah, severing ties of kinship, the strong mistreating the weak, women in society being mistreated, Ch fil rather than chastity, indecency and fornication were prevalent, abuse of substances, the drinking of alcohol was prevalent, he came into this environment of vice, and summon the people to virtue. And the brothers and I were sitting and talking last night about the environment that particularly our young people find themselves in this age. And specifically to those of you that are young and those of us that are rearing the young or those of us that are trying to be rescued from that, we are in an age of vice like that age in which he came, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. An age where abuse of substances is prevalent. An age where denial of Allah, which is the worst of vices, is the, is the dominant order. An age where chastity is strange and indecency is prevalent. An age where women and the weak and the oppressed are, are mistreated. Even this earth that we're upon is mistreated. We are in an age of vice, so how much do we need this lamp of virtue? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and many of us, we incline towards those vices, with the other Bala Ta'ala. So how much do we need this warner to save us from that painful punishment that will result if we turn from the light, we turn from Allah, we turn from His Messenger and the virtue that He brought toward those vices, with the other Bala Ta'ala. And as Shaykh Ibrahim mentioned, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when this command came upon him, it was weighty. This command to summon his, his near relatives and his tribesmen. And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as a servant, Abdullah, he did as his order commanded, did, did as his Lord commanded. So he summoned his tribesmen, or he summoned his family, and he summoned his tribesmen. And he invited them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to associate no partner with him. And as Sheikh Ibrahim explained, his uncle Abu Lahab bin Abdul Muttalib, whose proper name is Abdul Uzza, the slave of Al Uzza bin Abdul Muttalib, and his nickname was Abu Lahab. And Abu Lahab means the father of flames. And he was known for that due to his appearance, but also Ibn Ajiba, he says there's an indication that he's Jahannami, right? That he's, was what we say in English about certain people, he's a Hellion, right? He's a person of hell, will the other Billah Ta'ala, even in his nickname, and this was prior to the revelation, Abu Lahab, how do we understand Abu Lahab? And he stands and he, he, he tries to block the light of Allah's Messenger. So we find him as someone, he's someone trying to block the light of the lamp of virtue. And understand something, al jazau min jinsil amal recompense or requital right the result of our deeds recompense or requital is from the species it's in the same kind as the deeds that were perpetrated or the good deeds that were performed and i knew in my early islam and she wasn't a particularly educated uh, sister but a good person and she even said she had difficulty even reciting surah tabbat yada abi lahabin watab Right? Because essentially you're reciting the damnation of an individual by name. Right? Perished are the hands of Abu Lahab. Right? Destroyed, doomed are the hands of Abu Lahab. And 
tabbat yada abi lahabun wa tab. This is very strong language Allah is revealing. It means, may he be doomed, may he be destroyed, may his hands and his whole affair be destroyed. An indication of how severe this language is, if you were to watch a, a, a modern movie that was subtitled, if someone used the F word, they would translate that as tabben lak. Right? That's severe language that Allah uses. So why would Allah reveal such a severe torment that is to be recited over all of the ages, as long as the Quran is recited, the disgrace and the punishment of Abu Lahab is to be, to, to be recited because Abu Lahab, and we're looking at people who are establishing, these are, the, these are archetypal figures of virtue and vice, like Sayyidina Khadija, she is the first believer. We could say that Sayyidina Khadija, she establishes the sunnah of following a Nabi Muhammad and embracing Al-Islam. We could say that, uh, that Sayyidina Ali, he establishes the sunnah of a child following Sayyidina Rasulullah. We could say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sayyidina Bilal, he establishes the sunnah of a slave following Sayyidina Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi wa Wasallam, and on and on. Abu Lahab, he is the archetype who established the crime of denial of and rejection of the Prophet ﷺ. So he is the archetypal kafir munkir, waliyadu billah ta'ala. He's the archetype of kufr, waliyadu billah ta'ala. And Allah protect us from that. Ya muqallab al-kulub wal absaratha bil kulubana ala dinik. So when you stand before anyone, you know, someone who thinks they're a wise guy on TV, Unfortunately, maybe someone who thinks they're, they're, they're intelligent and they invite to kufr at your university or whatever where you engage or the job, they mock your religion. They're following the archetype of who? Of Abu Lahab, the one who we recite their damnation. We can't do a khatam of Quran without at least reciting. One of the first, uh, we can't teach Juz Amma or half or a quarter of Juz Amma to our children without his damnation and disgrace being recited. al jazau min jinsil amal. Right? He, has tried to, he founded the crime of what? Trying to block the light of the lamp of virtue and thus steer people away from that which is beloved. Why such a severe punishment? How can someone be damned forever, O oh Allah? That understand any articulation in the Quran of the punishment of an individual as a manifestation of Allah's justice because Allah is just, that is commensurate to the crime, that is equal to the crime perpetrated by that individual. And in these early virtuous, uh, early tours of virtue, you heard that Allah said, I was a hidden treasure and I loved, loved. Allah says, I, Allah, Allah, I loved. Jalla Jalalu wa ta'ala fi ullah. I love to be known. So I created the creation and through me they knew me. So Allah created this realm in love. And all of this, we could say everything we're doing, as, uh, as our brother Ustaz Sama said, love always works, it's for love. So then how severe and how ugly and how wretched is the crime perpetrated by the one who tries to, rather than spread love, spread hatred. And not just hatred, hatred of the divine subhanahu and prophecy. On all of the prophets and the foremost of prophets and to the way of virtue and lead people away from knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to ignorance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ultimately to the hellfire with the other billah ta'ala. So understand that that's what you're reciting and that is, that is the magnitude of the vice that he committed. Kufr is the worst crime. Make no mistake about it. Kufr, disbelief in Allah is the worst crime. Don't tell me someone says, oh, well, they're a good person, but they're, they disbelieve in God. That's no such thing. There's no such thing. You and I and the heavens and the earth and prophets and scriptures, all of that is for what? So we can know Allah. And that is an expression of love for the divine and a grace from the Divine Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and the point of our soul and the point of all of this is, is to know Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. 
So someone who de denies all of that, they've denied virtue itself. They've missed the point itself. They've denied the hereafter itself. And that was a vice that was prevalent in that time. They didn't know about the hereafter. If there's no hereafter, I got to get it in this world. I can't wait for justice. I can't wait for what have you. I got to take what's mine. And we seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From that, Allah came and opened all of that. Or Allah revealed the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa And he came and opened all of that to us. And, and Abu Lahab in his, his wretchedness, he sought to block that. Well, the other Bada ta'ala. And this, and we're mentioning some of the chronology of the early verses that were revealed in one of the narrations, uh, in, in, in the science of, of Quran, this was the sixth revelation to be revealed. Right? Ikra, noon. al muzammil al mudathir al fatiha tabbat yada abi lahabin wa tab. Right? Perish, and this is so we have these archetypes of faith, of lordship, of submission, of prayer, of night prayers, of character, right? Of warning. These early believers coming, there's not been open opposition to them yet. Murmurings are in Mecca of what the Prophet is inviting to, and who comes and stands and thinks he's too big and bad and wants to mock Sayyidina Rasulullah? Abu Lahab. And Abu Lahab, he had virtues. He had virtues. His virtues didn't avail him. His wealth won't avail him. His children won't avail him. He had a virtue that many of us, and inshallah we don't envy it, but we naghbituhu. He was from the Al of the Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Right? And that didn't save him in his kufr. So look at Hamza. Hamza was his brother. Al Abbas was his brother. From the dearest of people to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Hamza asalullah, Sayyid al Shuhada. Right? He could have taken that way and he chose to turn away from that way. And in one of the narrations, when the Prophet ﷺ gathered them at Safa, and he said, I, Surely I'm a warner to you before a painful punishment, he threw a stone at him. Right? He stoned Sayyidina Rasulullah. So they mentioned that's why Tabbat Yada Abi Lahabin Watab perished are his hands and he's perished. Ma'agna anhu maluhu wa ma kasab. His wealth and his earnings, and from the meaning of his earnings, his children will not avail him. He said, if what my cousin, if what my nephew, excuse me, if what my nephew says is true, then I'm going to purchase myself, uh, purchase my, my salvation from that with my wealth and with my children. Right? A materialist. A materialist, will the other Right? So Allah revealed that your wealth won't help you, nor will your children. One of his children, Utbah, he was one of those who menaced the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet sallallahu and we will address this inshallah. It's rare. Generally we find the case of the Prophet and his adversaries is he prays for them, right? Generally. You've heard us say that before. You've heard our shayukh say that. Even when they stoned him at, at, at Uhud, he said, um, Oh my Lord, forgive them, for surely they know what, not what they are doing. Right? That's generally the case of the Prophet sallallahu There are exceptions. Utbah was an exception. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, Sinned against him, afflict him with one of your dogs. So on the journey, to, on, on, the, on the road to Syria, he was killed by a lion. His children weren't able to avail him. He, and Allah protect us from his punishment, Abu Lahab, he died of what? After the battle of Badr, he died of smallpox. And people feared being infected with the disease, so they left him alone for three days until he started to decompose and smell with the other Bilatala. So then they, they, uh, you know, they, uh, they ridiculed his children. How can you leave your father like that? So they did what? They hired someone to take him away and bury him. He wasn't even buried by his own sons. And again, indicating that's, that's how someone who tries to put out the light of Al-Habib Sallallahu Alaihi That's how much someone matters who tries to put out the light of Al-Habib Sallallahu Alaihi And if only it was that, right? If only it was that chastisement in the world, and then Allah says, Sayyasla naran data lahib, lahab. He will be roasted in a flaming fire with the other Bala Ta'ala. Wamra'atuhu ham hamala tal hatab. And his wife, Um Jamil, she'll be carrying uh, the, 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 the firewood. Fijidiha hablum mim masad. In around her neck, a cord of masad. A narration of the meanings of that cord of masad, we know it as palm fiber. One of the narrations is a chain 70 cubits long that will enter her mouth and come out the bottom and be the rest of it wrapped around her neck. 
right? And what, what was her crime? Her crime was violating Al Habib, وسلم, trying to block the path of the Prophet وسلم, by throwing storms in his path and, and, and other crimes. She also carried tales with the other Bilatana. Right? Worsen relationships between parties by what? By spreading fitna between them. And that's one of the meanings of, of spreading fire between individuals. So again, she has a, a requital that is commensurate of the behavior in which she engaged. And we seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from that. And that is, the, that is their story. And Abu Lahab, he did not just oppose the Prophet sallam at that one instant when the Prophet sallam invited his people or invited um, the people of, of Mecca. Right? That was the beginning, and for that this verse was revealed. The Prophet ﷺ again, Rabbana sami'na innana sami'na munadi'in yunadi lil imani an aminu bi rabbikum fa'amanna. O our Lord, we've heard a caller calling out to faith so we believe. The Prophet ﷺ during his years of Mecca, throughout the years of Mecca, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would go around to the various camps, right? At Mina, at the, the, the markets and what have you. He would go to the gatherings and people and say, Ayu Hannas, O people, Allah orders you to worship Him alone and associate no partners with Him. Right? Summoning them to faith. Summoning them away from uh, polytheism. And we seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from that. And what would Abu Lahab do? And understand something. And those of you, some of you come from areas of the world that are tribal. Right? This isn't just one of his tribesmen. This isn't just a Hashemi. This is his Am, right? This is his paternal uncle, the brother of his father. Imagine in a tribal society the significance when you're proclaiming a message and the person, rather than edifying you, you're one of your closest tribesmen, our, our jurists differ whether or not the Am gets the filial piety of the father. Is Biru al-Walidain applied just to fathers and grandfathers or does it apply to uncles as well? That's how close Abu Lahab was to him, right? And, how, and again, those of you from tribal civilizations, you understand how significant it is if one is one's own tribesman, one's own uncle, he was the one who was, who was driving people away from the path that you were inviting to him, uh, them to. He was following the Prophet wasallam and saying, Beware of him. He is calling you to forsake the religion of your forefathers. So Allah revealed for Abu Lahab what Allah revealed. However, even Abu Lahab, and that's the thing about a Habib, وسلم, right? A Habib, he said of his adversaries, of the hypocrites, when he was forbidden to pray for their forgiveness, right? He was forbidden to pray for the forgiveness of his adversaries from among the hypocrites, those who acted like believers and it hid their, their disbelief and plotted against him, Allah said, even if you sought forgiveness for them 70 times, Allah will not forgive them. He said, if I knew that if I sought forgiveness for them more than 70 times, Allah would forgive them, I would do so. One of them, he gave, off, he gave his own very shirt for him to be shrouded in. You know, hopefully they can save him a little bit from what he's headed to. Even Abu Lahab, the archetypal kafir, he benefits from Al Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam today. Right? Today where I live. Monday. And Al Bukhari narrates, Mu'allaq. Mu'allaq is like when he doesn't mention the Senate. Al Bukhari narrates, Mu'allaqan from Urwa, that Abu Lahab was seen in a dream by some of his family. And in commentary, it's, it's Al Abbas, right? His brother. A period of time after he, died, after he died, so after the death of Abu Lahab, Al-Abbas, his brother, radiallahu anhuma, radiallahu anhu, he sees him in a dream and he said, what did you experience after you left us? And he said, I didn't experience any ease. Right? Khalas, what's the, what's the afterlife for those who deny Muhammad? After I left you, I didn't experience any ease. Except on Monday, I'm given to drink here. You can take a little sip of, of, of drink from there in the hellfire. On Monday, I'm given a drink here because I emancipated Thuwayba. Who is Thuwayba? Thuwayba was a slave of Abu Lahab. And Thuwayba was the one who came to Abu Lahab when Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, bin Abdullah bin Abdul Muttalib was born. So he's lost Abu Lahab, Abu, Abu Abdul Uzza, he's lost his brother Abdullah, right, on the more well-known narration. 
His sister-in-law Amina is, is pregnant. She's gone full term in her pregnancy and she's delivered a healthy baby boy named Muhammad. Right? Bin Abdullah, bin Abdul Muttalib, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. So Thwayba comes and says, Amina, right? Your sister-in-law, you know, she lost her husband or what have you, but she's just given birth to a healthy baby boy. So he was so happy with the news of the birth of Habib, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that he emancipates Thwayba in that moment. So Thwayba gained what? Her emancipation from Al-Habib, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And she nursed Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Abu Lahab, despite the wickedness of his crime, right? Despite his archetypal kufr, wa the billah ta'ala, he has a diminished sentence, right? He see, receives a little clemency every Monday because he emancipated the way and joy of Al-Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So if that's the case, how much joy should we seek? How much joy should we experience? How much should we hope from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that if we're joyous in Al-Habib, we celebrate Al-Habib, we sing about Al-Habib, we remind about Al-Habib, we poetry about Habib, we invite to Al-Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and to the virtue that he brought that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us respite. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us ease and we ask you by this Habib and the Quran that was revealed upon him and by your names and attributes and essence that is mentioned there, O oh Allah, we ask you, O oh Allah, to give us to hear that caller who calls to faith and that we believe in you, O oh our Lord. So protect us from the punishment of the fire. Forgive us our evil deeds. Turn our good de our evil deeds into good deeds. We ask you that. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, we ask you that by your mercy and you're the most merciful of the merciful. Brothers and sisters, the aim of us coming together is to connect to this Habib Sallallahu He's the lamp of virtue, brothers and sisters. Don't connect to Lahabiyun, right? Nariyun with the other Billah Ta'ala. Jahannamiyin, Hellions. Anyone who calls you away from this Habib is a Hellion with the other Billah Ta'ala. And anyone or anything that invites you and connects you to this Habib, whether you can recite his book, study his sunnah, send salawat upon him, do dhikr, do salah, give charity, filial piety, any rope between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of the sunnah of Habib, brothers and sisters, cling to it. Cling to it and invite to it. Oh Allah, don't sever us from this Habib. We ask you, oh Allah, don't sever us or any of these be beautiful, beloved brothers and sisters from his community. Don't allow us to be severed from him. Even the twinkling of an eye. Ya Arhamar Rahimin, Ya Arhamar Rahimin. Ya Arhamar Rahimin, and don't leave any of us out in khair and lutf and afiyah. Wa sallallahu ala Muhammad wa alihi wa sallam. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Please excuse me.